Okay. But that does not change anything yet until we recognize this thing over here. Okay. Now, what do we recognize? What do we get when, what's the definition when we dot two vectors together? U dot with V equals to magnitude of U, magnitude of V, and cosine theta, right? Okay, this is a definition of the dot product. Okay, now if this is unit, this is unit, this will just simply be reduced to cosine theta. So U dot with V is equal to cosine theta. What do we know about cosine theta? Cosine theta is um, less, more than one, and, sorry, more than minus one, less than one. So, if we want this value to be 3 throughout the point of travel, okay, that is to say, right, that these three components over here, okay, forget about this a moment, just, okay, that's to half, that's to half, three. These, these three components at the moment are, have to be one, okay. Now, does that make sense? Because, you see, they are all unit, right? So, I'm just rewriting this like that, they're unit, the one, one. So, that means the value of this, the value of this, the value of this will be between minus one and one, okay? But if, if this value is, is 0 0.9, okay, these, these two components can't make up for this. These two products can't make up for this because they can only be 1 and 1, you see? So 1 plus 1 plus 0 0.9 would be 2.9, and that's not equal to 3. So that would mean that this, this 1, 2, and 3 would be equal to 3 by, by this argument here that they can only take values from minus 1 to 1. So for them to be equal to 3 throughout their, their travel towards the two curves, they, they have to be 1, 1, 1. So in particular, we have dot with T2S is equals to 1. Okay? So we need to use the definition of the dot product again to really, really uh, explain this carefully. We know that this dot, this is equal to 1 by argument of cosine, cosine theta being less than 1 and 1, okay? So this has to be equal to 1, okay? However, writing that out, okay, this would also equal to cosine theta, am I not wrong? Where cosine theta would be these two angles over here, okay? T1 and T2, yeah. This is just an extension of how I explained it over here. Because of its unit length, it will be 1 and 1. So that means these two would equal to cosine theta, okay? And this time, I'm focusing on the equal sign, okay? So if this is equal to 1, okay, cosine theta would take the value of theta equals to 0 plus 2 pi, okay? So one value, I mean, we can just have to focus on the 0. If theta equals to 0, that would say that T1 and T2 are the same. Okay, that means the angles would have to be the same angles. That means T1 is equal to T2, both in direction and in magnitude. In magnitude because its magnitude is 1, and in direction because if this is equal to 1, theta, cosine theta is equal to 1, and that would mean that theta would be equal to 0. Zero angle between the two, that means they are the same. So if they are the same, I'm going to rewrite it as this. Right? And, and doing an extension of that, what is the definition of the unit tangent vector? That would be the first derivative of the position vector in terms of r, and I mean differentiate with respect to r, and that would be for t2, the first derivative of, let's just say, r1, the position vector differentiated with respect to s. Sorry, apologies again, with respect to s, with respect to s. So. Drawing it, going from these two equations, we can now integrate them with respect to s, and then you just put uh, uh, the s inside, the, the arc length, I mean the arbitrary arc length along the curve, we would get r1s is equal to r2s by integrating with respect to s, and this explains why the two curves are equal, okay? Because simply because the position vectors are the same. You put in a value of the arc length, you would get a certain point R1 on the curve C1, and that point is equal to C2. So, that is to say that when kappa and torsion are equal, since the position vectors are equal, they will go from this point, and they would, C2 would travel, and it's equal to C1. There we go. The fundamental theorem of space curves says that the two curves are congruent they're not the same, they are congruent, meaning that they can be translated to each other when kappa and torsion are equal and given that both of them are non vanishing curve. That means kappa does not equal to zero. And there you have it, the proof of the fundamental theorem of space curves. 
all this possible uh, given one thing. Well, actually, given all these conditions here, but how did, did the proof get kicked off or kick started is by this one over here. Okay? The function s. Okay? t1 dot with t2 add up with n1 dot with n2 add up b1 dot with b2. And this is where it is good to say about Oliver, what's his name? Oh, yeah, Heaviside. Now, obviously, I, I didn't know where they come up with this, but if you notice, it's very difficult to go from here to over here. You know, how did he think of something like this and all of a sudden get the value 3? And then to differentiate that, to, to say that it doesn't change, you know, it's, it's near, I mean, unless you can really know how, how he worked backwards to go from here to here, then you know how the proof started. But if you see, and that's why I would like to say, or I, like, like what I would like to sum up that this, in a way, it's a, I wouldn't, okay, I wouldn't say it's a, a, a half proof. Neither, neither would I say that it's a, a full proof, if, if there's such a term. Because we didn't know how to start out with the function fx. It's only that when I read it up, they started with the function fs, and that's how we got this result. But it's, it's really going from what we don't know to what we can use for the proof. You see, once we get here, we can go to the proof over here. But it's really starting with what we don't have or what we don't know to get this equation over here. And that is why some honor should be paid for those who make the work before us. Oliver Heaviside, the person who popularized vectors. Now, this proof could be done by anybody, but I must say that you know, they did a lot of nice work, and this is one of them. Fundamental Theorem of Space Curves. Hope you enjoyed that presentation.